Hello, welcome, Matt from MrLiker.com. I hope you're well. In today's video, we are talking about boxes. No, we're not actually talking about boxes, but we are talking about how to receive your boxes. This video will look at the cost benefits and what is involved with regards to importing into the UK. But you just need to apply the rules for your own country. Okay, so first things first, despite calling myself MrLiker.com, I do try to spend as little money as possible on buying my cameras and lenses. For that reason, I try to shop smart online to find the best deals that I can. I'd say at least 95% of all my cameras and lenses are bought on eBay, and I specifically filter for Europe. While the UK is in the EU, it means I can buy lenses from anywhere within Europe and receive lenses without any import tax and without any duty or extra kind of penalties on top. This gives me a much wider market to search for rare and vintage lenses, which I'm trying to obtain to use for my own photography. Now I'd say there are probably three main ways to buy hard to find camera lenses and cameras. Taking me as an example, living in England and searching in the EU, I can wait patiently and look for anything to list on eBay within the EU and hope it lists at a good price. That's option one. Option two is maybe look at local auction houses, such as the Flint's auctions that we looked at um, in the last video. There are various auction houses which specialise in hard to find rare and exotic kind of camera equipment. So that's the second option, but you may find that the cost, sometimes it may be higher, sometimes it may be lower. So it's also worth checking it out. And then option three is to import from outside of the EU. That means you have the whole world to search within, but you will incur an import fee when bringing goods into the EU, assuming you live in the EU in this example. After discovering the amazing Canon LTM vintage lenses at maybe the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, I've been trying to pick up what I deem to be some of the best lenses to use on my Leica 3 cameras. Now I bought the Canon 28mm earlier in the year and since then I've always listed for the Canon 25mm f3.5 LTM. Now this lens is a much rarer lens, it's very small and it seems really difficult to get hold of and the price is much higher than the 28mm. So I've literally spent all year waiting, hoping that a lens would list on eBay at an affordable price. So when I'd saved enough money, I was like, right, now is the time to buy my 25mm Canon lens. I looked on eBay and the only one listed in Europe was the same lens I'd seen a few months earlier, which was listed for £796, 25p, plus £10.50 postage. So a total cost of £806.25, which in my eyes is way too much for this lens. But So then I thought, right, what about importing? So next I started looking at lenses listed in Japan. Now there are a lot more copies of this particular lens in Japan, so I had a real choice of different conditions at different prices. I wanted a really clean copy and I decided to go for this seemingly mint condition, 25 f3.5, lens with case both front and rear caps and the original Canon 25mm viewfinder that helps add to the value if you're looking to hold it long term as a potential investment as well as to use the lens. So let's look at the calculation for this. So the lens was listed in Japan for £453.98p and then looking on the gov.uk website at the duty and commodity codes is going to cost me then an extra 20% VAT so say roughly £100 so that would give me a total of £550. So the total price would be £550 versus £806. So I decided to bite the bullet and import from Japan. So how does it work? Well, you click the button on eBay saying buy as normal. But what happens is you receive a letter before receiving the box if you live in the EU, with my example being a UK citizen. Here's the letter that I received in advance of receiving the box. If I open it up. Okay, so here's the letter from Parcel Force saying that I needed to pay £85.14 plus £12 clearance, a total of £97.14, before they would send me my parcel. So all you do is you go onto their website, pay by, as it says, credit or debit card, and then the next day you receive your parcel. So now the exciting bit. I guess this doubles as an unboxing video. If you're one of my patrons, I've been doing a few unboxing videos recently. Okay, so the box arrived, as you can see, all the way from Japan. And then, in the box, excuse the rustling, 
I received. It was better wrapped than this for ease of YouTube. I've unwrapped it already. I received the Canon lens in the original case in nice condition and the 25mm Canon finder. I'm not going to use that finder but I thought I'd show you anyway. Okay and then in the box itself pop the top here we have right are you ready for how big this lens is? This is an absolute gem of a lens. Look at this. This is why I've been lusting after this lens all year. Lenses don't get more beautiful than this. Even as a Leica fanboy, this is nicer. Original rear cap. I've not seen many of these and I've bought a lot of Canon lenses before. And obviously the original or a Canon front cap. Now here's the stunning lens itself. And it's in beautiful condition. So I'm very happy it was well worth the, the import stress, if you call it that. There wasn't any stress at all, but as you can see, the optics are just mint front and back. One big advantage of importing is there are many more copies of this lens in Japan. So it's much easier to get a really nice copy than say one old bashed up copy that might be floating around in Europe, for example. So why did I buy this lens? I will show you how I plan to use this lens. I prefer 25mm to 28 but it was just the size that won me over. Okay, so this is actually on my Leica 3A but I'll probably use it on my Leica 2F because that's slightly lighter. But just look at the size of that lens. Absolutely stunning. And just to point out, I'll use my own 25mm Voigtlander finder because it has the much better 25mm super bright frame line than the larger, heavier Canon finder that came with the, the lens. So this is the reason why I import. I don't import very often, but when I do, it's for very special items. My other import was the Fuji GF670 some years ago. And for anybody that knows that camera, that is quite a special camera as well. I've got a review to come on the Fuji GF670 and I'll also do a review on this Canon 25mm lens when I've had time to use it and kind of gather some example images. If we quickly recap the numbers for anybody interested, so I paid 453.98 price to the eBay seller, I paid £85.14 import VAT which worked out to be 18.7% not 20%, I'm not quite sure how they worked that out. The clearance fee was £12, giving me a total price of 551 and 12 pence. The same lens without case, without finder listed in Europe was £806.25, giving me a total saving of £255.13. And not only that, I've got a better lens with a much higher resale value because it's a, a complete kit. So that's all I've got for you. I just wanted to kind of share my experience with importing cameras for anybody that's trying to find potentially their favourite Leica lens or their favourite, I don't know, what, either end of the scale, favourite Minolta lens if you're looking for something cheaper. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. Let me know in the comments if you import lenses or whether you prefer to buy locally. I know from chatting to a few of you regulars on YouTube recently, some of you managed to pick up amazing bargains by going to kind of local auctions. Now, it really does depend on what country that you live in. In the UK, I think those days have passed and it's less easy to find a bargain, hence me searching much further afield and importing all the way from Japan. If you live in America, maybe you can still pick up a deal locally. And, um, but let me know in the comments, where do you find your best value deals on kind of rare, hard to find lenses, such as the one we're looking at today. Please like, share and subscribe and see you again in the next video. Bye.